Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a portrait with oils in Procreate. So let's jump right into it. In order to achieve this, I'm going to be using my thick paint brush set for Procreate. You can find it along with a free mini version for you to try out on my Gumroad page through the link in the description below. I'm also going to be using this interesting photo reference by Toa Heftiba. I will leave the link in the description as well, in case you want to follow along. As always, before I start with my oil painting, I'm going to import a few textures from the ones that are included with this set. First I will add an oil color base. I choose the one called sky blue, and I will adjust the curves a little, to make it slightly darker and saturated. Then I'll import an oil texture sheet, particularly the number one. This layer needs to be set as overlay mode. Finally I will add a canvas texture, specifically the number 3. I set this layer to multiply, and adjust the curves until I get a more subtle texture. This is not necessary, but I personally like to do it. As always it is a good idea to name your layers. Before I start with the portrait, remember that you can see what brush I'm currently using at all times, by looking at this rectangle right here. Using the super wet flat brush, the first thing I'm going to do is a quick sketch. This is sort of the first draft. I assume that it is most likely to look super ugly, but that's not the point. This first rough sketch will allow me to explore where everything needs to be. This is especially important when doing a portrait, because the placement of the facial features can change the way the person looks. Doing a very rough sketch allows me to stay flexible before I fully commit with each decision. More than a drawing, this sketch is more like big shapes and quick marks. Once I have this first doodle, I lower the opacity of the layer and I create a new one on top. In this layer is where I'm going to do my second and more refined drawing. Using the rough sketch as a reference, I dedicate whatever time I feel necessary to carefully draw all the features. I allow myself to use the selection tool to grab parts of my drawing and adjust their position if I need to. As you can see, I'm trying to be way more clean with my lines than in my previous sketch. The clarity and economy of lines is quite important here. I don't want my drawing to be distracting in the next stage, where I will be doing the actual painting. The purpose of this refined sketch is to provide me with all the basic information I need in the next step. Once I'm happy with this final drawing, I can start painting. I like to use a broad brush for the initial strokes. Using the thick paint 3 brush, I focus on covering the background and also the area for the head. Especially in the head area, I'm using dark reds and oranges because I think they will be a good underpainting that will show through in the final piece. Notice how I'm also switching to the smudge tool with the same brush to blend the colors in some areas. It is important to not blend everything though. Leaving some of the strokes with a hard edge will contribute to the piece to feel more like a real painting. You will see that for this specific artwork, I felt very comfortable using the messy canvas roll brush as my main brush for almost the whole process. It has a really awesome canvas texture that works very well in conjunction with the other canvas texture that I added at the beginning of the video. At this stage I allow myself to be a little messy. What I'm doing here is adding spots of color. These are not the final colors of the portrait, but colors that I can observe in the original photo, and that will show through once I start painting the final colors on top. The human face has a lot of little hue variations everywhere, like red from the blood under our skin, or pale green in the areas where the bones are closer to the surface. It really depends on the lighting conditions of your reference as well, so it is good to look for those subtle color clues in the picture. From these color spots I can slowly work by building layers and layers of brush strokes on top of each other. 
If you notice, I started by doing big spots of color, and I slowly work with a smaller size of the brush as I progress to a more defined stage. Using the canvas hypermixer brush, I try to give some more life to the background, as I'm thinking that leaving it just like it is in the picture could look a little boring for a painting. Here I thought it would be cool to try one of the latest additions to this brush set, the experimental thick brush six, to do the texture for the beanie. I also blend some of that texture away, so that it looks more organic. Back to the messy canvas roll, I continue working on big spots of color for the hat and the hair areas. Then I continue defining the face further. At this stage I start to feel quite happy about how the painting is going. I especially like the colorful richness I'm achieving in the beard, so I jump to work harder on the beanie and the hair. I'm also being careful with working with the negative shapes around the head and hair. Here, I define a little more the shoulders and chest areas that I barely had touched until now. For the hair, I lower the size of the messy canvas roll brush to achieve these square shaped strands that will help me define the hair volumes in a painterly way without having to paint hair by hair individually. And I also use the smudge tool in some of those strokes. With the help of the canvas mixer brush one, I blend some edges around the silhouette with the background, so that everything looks more integrated. Now with the brush strokes texture 2 brush, I add a few touches of these extra realistic brush strokes here and there, mostly in the edges that also help to bring everything together in a cohesive way. As a final touch to define the hair, I use the white palette knife brush with a very small size to paint a few loose hair strands, and I do the same thing for the beard. This was a stylistic choice. I thought on using the white palette knife to drag the painting horizontally and vertically in a few very limited places. Here you can see me working on some final refinements and details. And this is the final result. I really hope you liked this video. If you use my brushes and post your art on social media, feel free to use the hashtag Manero Brushes so that I can see what you create. I will be extremely happy to share your creations with my audience. Don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos and give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out my Gumroad page where you will find the thick paint brush set for Procreate and many other sets that I have available. I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching.
See you next time.